Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that short clip of uh, our past president, uh, Barack Obama. In that video, he's asked a question about something that Sarah Palin said, and she's criticizing his um, his, his his policy that the America would never use a nuclear weapon against um, a country that did not have nuclear weapons. She uses an analogy, right, and says that that's like, you know, you're the biggest kid on the playground. You say, I'll never punch anybody. So then she claims that everybody's going to punch you because you, you claim you won't punch back, right? So she's criticizing this um, kind of pacifist stance that she puts it. Uh, and instead of really dealing with the argument, Obama instead says, well, she's not qualified to talk about nuclear things. Uh, and she's the, the thing is, she's not really talking about nuclear weapons so far. She's talking about defense strategies. I'm not saying she's right. I'm not saying she's wrong. I'm just saying she's talking about something um, that has to do with national security and uh, defense policy. And he criticizes her for not having credentials in uh, nuclear science or whatnot. So instead of instead of engaging with the ideas that she puts forth about defense policy, she he instead criticizes her lack of credentials in a different area, right? So this is a kind of classic ad hominem where he's deflecting, right? Instead, I don't want to answer this question about defense policy. Instead, I'm going to criticize the person who's offering this argument. It takes our focus off of the question about um, defense policy and instead makes us focus on um, uh, Sarah Palin's character, right? So a classic ad hominem. And this is probably, I would say, I don't know, the most common uh, fallacy you'll see. People do this all the time. You're going to see a lot of this coming up in um, uh, politics. Uh, you see it all the time in politics to begin with. So uh, if you watch any of the debates, any of the presidential debates, then you're going to see a ton of this kind of stuff. Uh, so number eight is uh, one of my favorite ones because it has such a fun title. Post hoc ergo propter hoc which is uh, Latin for after this, because of this. <laughs> and so basically, <clears throat> pardon me, the idea is that uh, because one event followed another, the first causes the second, right? So A happened, then B happened, and then C happened, therefore A caused B caused C, right? There's a, a causality, a chain of causality, right? Uh, that leads to this, this uh, result. Right. A happened, then B happened. Therefore, they must be related. You know, another version of it. So this fallacy confuses correlation with causality and correlation is, you know, the idea that two things are happening at the same time. Right. And instead of just saying, OK, maybe there's a link. This fallacy is saying there's definitely a link. This is definitely linked to this. Right. So I'm going to show you a short video and then talk a little bit more about this. Uh, this is a short clip from the best TV show to be, ever be on TV called The Simpsons. You might have heard of it. Um, uh, after the clip, we'll return and talk a little bit about post hoc ergo propter hoc. 